So Ouch, it's telling it like it is. So talk about prove you love. Prove Buster, you prove your love that you want to keep this girl from being a teenage pregnancy and being one of the statistics of the hundreds of thousands of girls that get pregnant before marriage and while they're still in high school and have to drop out of high school and have to have a premature baby and go through months in the in the uh, nursery uh, in intensive care because somebody couldn't prove their love by waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's strong preaching and that's good preaching. Yep. Amen. <laughs> so yeah, it's like uh, Bob Harrington, the chaplain of Bourbon Street said one time, uh, some, he was preaching, and uh, some some guy came up to him and said, "Prove the Bible to me." And he said, "Prove it yourself." <laughs> okay, so, songs uh, say. Wait a minute! I got a little more thing here. See, none of what we say here is relevant. If you know, we could say anybody can say anything they want. It's like the old joke. Uh, I don't know if you've heard it about. Uh, uh, Opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got a couple, and they usually stink. So, you know, what we say or anybody else in the world says is, is irrelevant if this book is not the Word of God. You know, we can talk all we want, but if we want to do uh, another teaching on the proofs of the Bible, there are many proofs. We've even got a little booklet. 57 ways that we know the Bible is the Word of God. See, so we're not on here just being somebody who had religious parents or whatever and we decided that was the way to go and, uh, uh, you know, that's why we're on here. No, we're on here chiefly because we have proven, uh, we have allowed God to prove His Word to us. We know the Bible is the Word of God. Uh, we've got another book, and there's all kind of books on this subject. Actually, there's a whole branch of theology called uh, uh, apologetics that goes into the proofs and evidences that the Bible is the Word of God. So, you know, all these things that people are putting on the Internet and YouTube and anywhere else they're putting it, mocking the Bible and saying, uh, you know, these Christians are, are so funny, you know, what they believe. Well, some of them are because they're really not believing uh, the scriptural uh, truth, but those who are believing the scriptural truths according to the rightly divided Word of God uh, are the people you should be listening to. Okay, some people say... Um Sex, sex is dirty. There's a myth. Yeah. All right. Another one is... Sex um, is beautiful. Well, that's not a myth. Okay. Um, Amen. <laughs> some people say I'm strong enough to resist temptation. Some people say sex before marriage is okay. Oh, uh, yeah. The, then, then there's the TV's influence and, uh, you know, like in movies and... Uh, they say, I, I, it's kind of funny, they have the the uh, things to go by here. There they have like uh, PG, which stands for pretty gross, and uh, instead of parental guidance, you know. But, but another thing they say is uh, adult content, when they have, you know, are going to have a movie with uh, sex scenes, and it's somebody, you know, boy meets girl, and the same... At the end of the first date, they, they're hopping in the sack with each other. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's not adult content. Adults should not be watching such things. And, of course, neither should children. It's It should be labeled uh, impure and... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Unrighteous. I got a, I got a oh. excellent word. Uh, immoral. Immature. That's the word I'm looking Ooh, for. Oh, immature love. Woo. Immature content should be. I I see right. All right, and then the uh, the myth. Another myth is is the standards of the Bible are too high. That's not true. Yes, I heard that one time. Uh, okay. Another myth is that uh, we're old-fashioned, 
You know, God has never changed. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's standard has never changed. Right. If something was a sin 20 years ago, 100 years ago, 2,000 years ago, guess what, folks? It's a sin today. Yeah. You know, back in Bible days, Jim, when uh, uh, women were prostitutes That's and Mr. stuff, Heavy Ribby they you. used to take them out and stone them. I mean, and nowadays, it's just common practice that uh, three out of four people that you uh, work with or three out of four people that you uh, maybe are standing in the store with or living with somebody or having sex with somebody that they're not married to. It's just a common, everyday, accepted as uh, that one sermon we recently heard by Keith Moore was talking about, it, it's accepted. In society today, it's accepted to live with people and to do all these things. But you know what? God doesn't accept that. That is right. not holy. I like, That's not walking in purity. I like another thing that uh, Keith Moore says. In fact, I like a whole lot of things, just about everything he says. I like, now, you have to be, uh, let me warn you, uh, this will be just disclaimer. If you don't want to hear the rightly divided word of God, don't check out Keith Moore's website. Or, let me put in, uh, and don't, also don't check out people like Kenneth Hagen, Fred Price, Marilyn Hickey, uh, Joyce Meyer, Dr. Mike Murdoch, Charles Capps. Okay, let's get back on. Uh, to name a few. Uh, here's another myth. We use protection. We won't get a sexually transmitted disease. I'm going to read you some statistics on that one in just a few minutes. Uh, another another uh, myth is willpower can do it. I don't need God's help. I can do it myself. I can take well, care of it. Mm. And another myth is you won't get pregnant. And you won't get pregnant doing it just once. Huh. Tell that to the hundreds of thousands of pregnant teenagers that didn't intend to get pregnant. Hmm. All right, well, we got through reading the list, and uh, now I want to read you a, a couple of things here. But we may add more to the list later as, oh, yes. we, as we think of it. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Reports on Sexually Transmitted Diseases and Teen Pregnancy, one in four teenage girls have chlamydia, HPV, herpes, or trichomoniasis, I guess it is. I don't know what those diseases really are. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you, you don't want them. Except you don't need them, and you shouldn't have to. No teenager should have to deal with those sicknesses and those diseases. And yet it says here, one in four teenage girls has them. And they got them through having sex. And then uh, another one here says 33% of girls get pregnant before the age of 20. Trust me, you wow. don't want to be in that number. That's not fun. It's not fun raising a child when you're a teenager. I haven't done that, but I've seen plenty of people try. And it's, it's a whole uh, lifestyle that you don't want to get into. Trying to get food stamps and trying to get help and trying to get money and never having enough and depending on your parents. I've seen many girls go through this. And then here's another statistic. 750,000 teenagers get pregnant annually. All of these things could have been avoided if people would just use some abstinence. You know, there's people in the school today teaching abstinence and the state is paying for it. And uh, it says that it's so much better. Kids will finish school. They will be less depressed. They will have fewer problems if they can just hold off on having sex. Um, we recently went to the Silver Ring thing, and we'll throw in a plug for that. You can probably go online and find this. And uh, this is where we got some of our information from. And what it is is they encourage teenagers to abstain from sex. And they uh, get them to buy a ring, a purity ring, and they put that on their finger and daily it reminds them that they're going to walk in purity and when they get married they can give that ring to their future husband or wife and say look I kept myself pure for you and meanwhile they need to be praying for their future husband or wife that that person will make that same commitment and will keep their self pure because that's the only way to keep from getting all of these diseases and there are so many sexually transmitted diseases Anyway, uh, I have a little thing to tell you. You might think you're having safe sex. Well, let me bust that bubble right now. 
The word safe means free from harm or risk or unhurt, secure from threat of danger, harm, or loss. Protected, this is from Webster's Dictionary, means kept safe or defended from danger or injury or loss. Let me tell you that these condoms that they're talking about do not really protect you and they really don't keep you safe because for the most